I'm here in Yellowstone uh, downtown. We're getting ready for uh, uh, our journey in Yellowstone National Park. Uh, and first tip of the day, according to uh, the uh, park station, we need to go early. We need to enter the gate early, 6 to 6.30 in the morning. Uh, so that you can get in because there are a lot of people going in the park so if you don't make through it earlier then you will be stuck because of traffic and you will be uh, losing a lot of time especially it's uh, the weather temperature here is hot now the temperature is around 40, 60, it's a little, a little bit cold in the morning. We're planning to go to see the geyser first, and then perhaps tomorrow will be the, uh, we'll go and see the uh, the wild animals in Yamar. So, see, this is the best western, it's a nice hotel, and uh, we like it, and it's, you know, it's on our budget, so, I highly recommend this uh, hotel, Best Western Hotel, because you will just uh, you will just spend your time uh, here during night time to rest and sleep. During daytime, you will be going out and you know spending your time in the in the park. So let's see. We're so excited to get into the park as early as now. So we just entered the uh, Yellowstone National Park. It's 6:40 in the morning. Uh, we're going straight to the Old Faithful, where the geyser is. So too early in, in the day to avoid crowds. Most people tour the park from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, wildlife are most active at sunrise and sunset. Arriving before 8 a.m. improves your chances of, you know, observing animals during their active periods. Park entrance gates are open 24 hours. So our first destination today is the Old Faithful area, the famous geyser. So it's a little bit drizzling right now. So this is the old faithful geyser. Geyser or geyser. Yeah. So you can see here people are waiting. So I think weather here is unpredictable. When we arrived here a few minutes ago, it was so cold now, it's a little bit warm. And then there comes a very strong wind. There's a uh, boardwalk. Uh, geysers beyond this point yeah hopefully we can find the big one uh, I just learned that Yellowstone is a super volcano super volcano it's really big at the heart of Yellowstone's past present and future lies a super volcano uh, this uh, volcano erupted uh, uh, the last eruption was 631,000 years ago uh, so pushing up there you go yeah. see see the guys there wow yeah there you go. Ooh. 
aqui, já são tantos. Uau! That's cool! It's beautiful! So this upper geyser basin, uh, home of Old Faithful, hosts the majority of the world's active geysers. The concentration of hydrothermal features here provides uh, ample evidence of Yellowstone's active volcano. And imagine partially molten rock uh, may be as close as 3.8 Three to eight miles below your feet and this magma provides the first key ingredients for creating thermal features heat you know all faithful erupts more frequently than any of the other big geysers although it is not the largest or most regular geyser geyser in the park but during summer uh, it erupts more it's really boiling See? See a boiling water. Wow. This must be uh, more than 100 degrees centigrade. Boiling. And by the way, forecasted eruption times are posted in the Visitor Education Center and in many of the area facilities. So let me explain further how these geyser form. Uh, you remember magma provides heat. Then rain and snow eventually supply the second ingredient, which is the water. The water seeps down several thousand feet below the surface where it is heated. And underground, cracks and earthquake faults form the third ingredient which is the natural plumbing system so superheated water rises through the plumbing to produce hot springs and geysers so you can see those geyser those uh, steam uh, were produced from a combination of heat wow. water Beautiful. and uh, the natural plumbing system of the uh, uh, earth So my next stop is uh, the view deck for the tower waterfall. Uh, this is the midway part, midway section of the tower waterfall. As you can see, the waterfall uh, from away from 
the mid section of the uh, view deck. Then I attempted or I uh, went down to uh, the bottom of the waterfall through a trail. You see the trail? Uh, a lot of people are going there, but it's too deep and too steep. It took me 20 minutes to reach the bottom. So upon reaching the bottom, you can see the uh, uh, fall closer and you can see uh, the uh, bottom so this is really an awesome view and and i enjoyed uh, watching the fall and the body of water the yellow river and then after that i went back uh, started to climb up the trail once again to reach my original destination it is really high and steep and but uh, it's a good uh, uh, view also to see all those features uh, like this uh, little stream of water and it's a good exercise for your body also So here's the top. Going down is really a lot easier than going up. Very steep, but it's worth it. And I was still not contented, so I went up to the top of the, the waterfall which is the basin and you can see the volume how the volume of water is so big so strong this is the Yellowstone River part of the Yellowstone waterfall so while we were driving the road we saw a uh, bison uh, across the fence. This is a bison, B Y S O N. This is the bubbling mud pots. Mud pots are acidic features with limited water supply. The Dragon's Mouth Spring, it's called Dragon's Mouth Spring. So this is the bottom of the Yellowstone Lake, the man said. So there are plants and microorganisms thrive in hot springs and other hydrothermal features and you can see in this uh, video those type of plants.
This is the Yellowstone Lake. Uh, it has an area of 286 square miles. It is the largest high elevation lake. It's above uh, 7,000 uh, sea level in North America. And the only outlet for this lake is the Yellowstone River. And Yellowstone Lake is also the site of one of the most extensive conservation efforts in the National Park Service. So amidst COVID-19, see how the car park looks like right now. A lot of people are visiting the park. And this is just one of the tourist spots in the Yellowstone area. So we're going up to the top of this hill so that we can see the, the Midway Kaiser or the Prismatic Kaiser to see the whole thing. So I'm going up to the overlook so I can see the whole prison, prismatic geyser. They said there are a lot of bear sightings here. So I did take my bear spray. There you go. My bear spray, just in case the bear pops out. Anyway, so it's way up here I can see the whole geyser Another trail walk down after trailing to the top. It's really good. It's good. I've not seen any uh, bear. So after this trip, we're going back home to the hotel to have another rest for the night. So tomorrow we'll be traveling to call the place Yamar. It's a uh, It's a place where we can see a lot of wildlife. We've seen sightings on, of uh, bison today, but uh, we didn't spend much time. So we're thinking of, anyway, we'll be having it tomorrow. So uh, I learned a lot of things today. First of all, I think uh, when you get into the Yellowstone Park, make sure that you have uh, a lot of gas in your tank because you will be driving flat. Although there are some filling stations in the park, but uh, would be better if you have some. I will when I get up there. And I will when I get uh, in the car. So that you will not be stressed out because you don't know. Or you will you be driving? And, uh, in the dirt. <clears throat> the other thing I think is uh, when you while you're driving, you need to be uh, focused on driving because the, the streets, the roads are narrow, just two lane and curvy. So you know, we've seen today one car. Uh, fell into the 
ravine because of the uh, because the of destructive driving. It's not good because while driving you will see a lot of you'll be amazed of uh, the good uh, scenery, beautiful scenery. But don't be distracted. You better uh, find a place where you can view things or ask somebody to uh, take photos or videos because that will be a destruction while driving. That's what one of the things I learned today. It will be hard. Another tip is uh, make sure to have a bear spray because you don't know while walking in the woods you will be uh, encountering some bear. So make sure you have bear spray. Uh, I bought a bear spray, it costs $40. I heard that you can rent also uh, some bear spray. During summer wear just a uh, light shirt but make sure you have something for your head like cap or uh, uh, that coat that to cover your head and face it's too hot and then uh, during the pandemic you can you should have your mask on always because there are a lot of uh, a lot of people going to the park so you don't want that uh, you don't want that you will be uh, uh, infected by the virus. Mm -hmm.